as you can see by the bag on the desk, a few days ago, I took a trip to the Lego store. Not just any Lego store, my personal favourite, the Stratford London Lego store, which is the one I always went to as a kid, so there is definitely a heavy bias there. But before we start, did you know Lego now charge 15p for a paper bag? I had this one from a previous trip, but next time you make a trip, if you want a big Lego bag, they will be charging for it, which I suppose stops everyone walking away with a paper bag because I don't know the last time I've walked away from the store and not had a paper bag, excluding this time. But the bag is actually full of a load of little bits I picked up. First off, I did get a little activity book because, and I'm sure some of you would agree, the stickers do look pretty cool. We've actually got a creator. This is from the creator space man. Then we've got the Lego City aliens. And then these, I believe, are one of the characters from the Lego Friends space. So we've got a sticker from each of the different space themes. And there's also a pet in a space who I think it's meant to be a cat. It does look really, really cool. I don't know exactly what set this is from, but I might have to give that another look. I also managed to get my Lego passport stamped. We'll take a look at that in just a second because I'm sure you want to see what I actually purchased. And here we have a brand new box for the build, a minifigures. That's right. They don't come in the plastic cases anymore. You can't see which minifigures you're getting. And because of that reason, Normally, when I go to Stratford, they have the minifigures already built, the new ones in a case. But this time, they didn't. They have a whole new station, which is identical to the one that we saw at Battersea Power Station, if you remember that video. It's really, really cool. And personally, I prefer them stations to the old ones that look a bit more like the pab wall, because it's just easier to rummage around and find the specific parts you wanted. Stay tuned to find out what minifigures we got from the BAM wall. But our last purchase is also a Lego Star Wars keyring. Today, I will be turning this into an actual minifigure, which now you can do for so cheap. Not only is this keyring only five pounds, X-Wing Pilot Luke is also coming in the new mech, which I think is slightly more expensive than the last one. I think it's about 12, 13 pounds, or to be fair, that's probably what the other mechs were at retail price anyway. But you can take the arms and the legs off this exclusive UCS Luke and apply them to any other Luke minifigure, just like the one from the X-Wing that I've got here. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm making my own UCS Luke. This is an exclusive, otherwise to the keyring, an exclusive minifigure to the X-Wing. This isn't a proper minifigure. There is the keyring metal going straight through it, which actually connects to the top of the legs through the torso, through the head and through the helmet. So you probably could remove this and have a little hole in the helmet, but they're not the same connections as a regular minifigure. So instead, I'll be taking the arms and legs, which do share the common connection, putting them on my Luke X-Wing and probably switching the arms back. So at least I still have an X-Wing Luke keyring. But it's the cheapest way you can pick up the UCS Luke for about £15. That's probably about 20 euros and 20 dollars overseas but i think it's a really great way of getting some of these exclusive minifigures for a lot cheaper if they did this with the c3po from the land speeder which is it's now got to be about three years old i'd definitely be picking one up for the legs they could do this with all the exclusive minifigures i guess yularen would be a bit harder to get because the main exclusivity for him is the torso the face and the hairpiece, which would all have a metal spike for him. But for some of these minifigures, especially for C-3PO, I'd love to get a key ring so that I can steal his silver dual molded leg. But now let's get to the desk. I want to talk a bit more about the pad boxes because I'm really interested in the way forward Lego are moving. But I think first up, we've got to build UCS Luke. So the game plan is to swap the legs on the keyring luke skywalker with the legs on the minifigure i've just realized the keyring says six plus i wonder why the keyrings are six plus i guess it's probably because the arms and legs pull off but we get minifigures in four plus sets so it must be because i don't actually know why that's six plus it says not suitable for naught to three but I think that should probably be four plus if we get minifigures in four plus sets. I guess four plus sets are a little bigger than a keyring, so that's probably the difference. But we're moving the legs 
onto this Luke Skywalker minifigure I got from the last X-Wing. We're yet to get another X-Wing, but there should be one later on this year. And this Luke actually has Firestar's custom printed arm pieces on official Lego arms, but they are custom arms and they do somewhat line up to the Lego versions. You can see there's a bit more detail on them. There's some wrinkles on the arms. So I think what I'm going to do with these arms, because they do look cool, but they're not quite the official ones, is I'm going to move the arms onto Wedge Antilles here on the right. So at least we've got the arms on someone else. And I could swap the torsos, but as you can see, Wedge uses the old torso, which isn't exactly screen accurate to A New Hope. Well, at least not for Luke Skywalker. So Luke has the accurate torso and legs, so I will need to pull off the arms, whack them on Wedge, have Wedge's arms for the key ring, and then the key ring arms for this Luke Skywalker, and just swap these legs around also, because Wedge, once again, has different legs. So it sounds a bit complicated, but hopefully it'll be a bit easy especially because I have a few different tips and tricks when moving the arms across. The biggest thing is you want to pull at the arms, not the hands, otherwise you could potentially crack them. And as you can see, the arm connectors are the exact same, but you might be able to see there is a gray pipe going right through this minifigure, and that is what is coming up actually from the legs here. I believe this is the top of the legs. It's been a while since I deconstructed a Lego minifigure keychain, but I believe it goes straight from the legs up into the head. And it's a slight, I think the head is more or less the same connection as a regular minifigure, except for it has that one hole in the middle, which isn't too far off the old choking holes that we used to get in minifigures. But the arms pop off just as easy as a regular minifigure. And the same goes with the legs. It's the exact same connectors, which is really really handy because i don't really think i'd have bought a minifigure a ucs x-wing exclusive minifigure to be precise off of somewhere like bricklink and that because most of the people that are trying to sell these are selling the minifigures for extremely high prices let's face it a lot of people did it with rex as well and that is where most of the disappointment has come from rex being in a really really cheap set because Everyone else is really, really happy they get to get their hands on Rex. And the people that bought the UCS Veneta hoping to sell an exclusive Rex minifigure for a very high price in the aftermarket because I've seen the cost of the Black Series minifigures and some other collectibles and they go for a lot, a lot of money. So I'm sure there were people that were hoping to get a quick profit with the Lego Rex, but of course, Lego couldn't make a fan favorite character an exclusive. It wasn't the exclusive that was marked on the box. So now we're getting in for, I think it's not far off the price of the Luke mech. And here we go, the UCS Luke. It does look really, really cool. And they're all official pieces. This is otherwise an exact minifigure you'd get from the set and no one would be able to tell the difference. So if you are still trying to buy a Luke from the set, I'm sure many people would just be getting Luke's this way very, very cheap and trying to sell them off as from the set. And to be fair, they're the exact same minifigure, all official Lego parts. There is no difference between this one and the one you get in the X-Wing. I will say though, if you are trying to pop off the key ring, Luke here doesn't have a dual sided head. So there is that difference. And of course the hole in the helmet, but if you didn't want to buy the new X-Wing mech, which looks really, really cool, if they included an X-Wing pilot other than Luke, I'd definitely be picking it up, but I just don't need another Luke. I mean, I've already got UCS Luke. There's a few other pilot costumes that I've used to make a few more X-Wing pilots, but I really like the way this looks. And now let's get the other pieces swapped. And now all the arms and legs have been swapped. I'll try and do a before and after of the minifigures, but I really, really do like the dual molded legs on this. And it's very, very tempting to get at least another key ring and give Wedge the same treatment, but I don't have torso and legs. Perhaps that is what would make me pick up the new Luke Skywalker mech. I can get another torso and legs with this pattern, grab another key ring and give Wedge the same treatment as Luke because these minifigures look really, really cool. I like the arm printing. It's very close to Firestar's. It does look a bit cleaner without the creases in the elbow. I think Firestar's have gone 
a little too realistic with them creases along the sleeves and it does look a lot neater with the cleaner arms but these legs are a must for the next x-wing luke i mean if you didn't want to buy the key ring and switch the arms and legs which i know technically are illegal lego techniques you probably could wait for i don't think we'll be getting these dual molded legs i think if lego had to give us one they'll probably give us the printed arms like they've done with c-3po we've got the c-3po printed arms a few times and as far as i'm aware they're the same ones that are on the exclusive land speeder version so They'll probably save the dual molded legs for the exclusivity and that is where the real grab is because I mean compare them to wedges I just think they look so much cleaner and I'm a big fan of them. Will I be picking up another keyring? I guess you've got to wait and see but now let's take a look at the new stamp I got because Stratford has a worldwide exclusive and then we'll take a look at the BAM minifigures. Now you might be thinking well of course Stratford has its own exclusive worldwide exclusive stamp because well it's Stratford nowhere else can say that but as well as this and here are a few of my other stamps that I've got I've actually got one for all of the major London Lego stores I know I don't quite have every single official London Lego stamp and I actually need to go back to Leicester Square because I didn't realize that each of the different stations around the store had their own stamps as well so I've only got the ones from the tills and a few other specials there but I got this cool looking wolf one, which the cashier didn't quite know what it was from. I think we decided that it was probably Lego Chima or something like that, because there are a load of wolves in that now. And we got this exclusive stamp. You might realize what sets it apart from the rest. This is the stamp that Lego have given all of its stores to celebrate the giant space collab it's got amongst all its themes. Again, I showed you the stickers earlier. You can get a better look at the creator sticker, the city sticker, and the Lego friend sticker. Really, really cool stickers. But the difference between this one and the rest of them, the store contacted Lego because the stamp itself is actually missing the circle that every single other one of these stamps has. And no other store has had a similar fault. So as far as we are aware, this is a worldwide exclusive space stamp. So I'll try next time I go to a Lego store. Hopefully that'll only be in a month or so's time. I'll try and get another space stamp next to that so I can show you the difference between them. But I think it's really, really cool that it's just missing a ring. And I know misprints and stuff like this are very popular in the Lego community. So I thought you'd all definitely want to see this stamp that's missing its ring and the other stamp that I picked up. Before we look in the box at the BAM minifigures, you can see this is the brand new build a minifigure case. You've got another speech bubble here that you can put your name on or write what you're storing in the box. And other than that, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the pick a brick wall box that I got a couple of months ago. And it is about half of the dimensions you can see it's probably about two thirds of the height if that is three plates on the side printed there it's about two thirds of the height and just to compare the size with the boxes of the minifigure factory it's slightly taller hopefully they redesigned the minifigure factory boxes to fit as a one by two box if that's a two by four and we've got a two by two We've definitely got to have a one by two for minifigure factory. Just make them a bit taller as well because they don't quite add up. But it's about one and a half of these boxes wide. And the smaller pick a brick box, which was in stock at Stratford, is actually a two by two of the same height. So it's slightly taller than the builder minifigure box. But I think they probably made this one a bit too big anyway because, well, three minifigures in a box that size there's a lot of space not being used up I definitely prefer it to the old plastic cases these are great for displaying the minifigures but even these have quite a bit of wasted space and allow the minifigures to quite literally flip over so this was the last builder minifigures that I got these are the Christmas ones and this time round, there were a few of the space minifigures which I wasn't able to get all the pieces I wanted but I got most of them so let's take a look so i may not have got all of the pieces that i wanted but i was able to complete this minifigure here on the left hand side which does use one of the new space torsos with the green arms i believe these can be picked up in quite a few of the sets the green arms 
don't come in any of the cheap sets that I know of, but I think there's like a 30, 40 pound one that you can get them in. And I think that is a unique head and hair combo with the space torso and legs. And there's also a data pad here, which looks very similar to Vision's computer that came in the Marvel Sim F, but once again, different design on there. I'm not quite sure if it's been used in any of the sets, but I'm sure it's not exclusive to the BAM wall. There are a few parts exclusive to the BAM wall and I managed to pick up a few of them, but I'm gonna have to wait for Brick Owl to have them registered on the site because Bricklink didn't have any in stock and Brick Owl hasn't quite yet registered the pieces. The second minifigure, I was able to pick up this really cool space chess piece, which does look like the piece used for Paz Vizsla or Rekka from Bad Batch. And we've seen it used quite a few times. I think even Buzz or one of the characters from Buzz got this treatment. Maybe even Saw Carrera has this piece. There's so many now, but I only got the helmet, the face with a moustache, which does look really cool. And then the torso and legs were a bit different. They're really cool torsos that I picked up in place of the ones I'm missing but we'll get to the uses for them in a second. Last but not least, we have this alien. The head and the antennas are otherwise exclusive pieces. I think the antennas have come in green for, is it a Lego Batman movie minifigure? But I'm sure you'll probably be able to find out on Brick Owl. So let me know down in the comments if you recognize what that headpiece has been used for. It's green with antennas. I know we've seen a few printed ones for Ladybug CMFs, but I'm pretty sure we've seen it in green before. It comes with a nice flask here, which does have a trans purple liquid in it. But once again, torso and legs were not in stock. The torso is actually a builder minifigure exclusive. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. But unlike last time where I couldn't find any of the party pieces, I did end up picking up the heads for both of these minifigures because I do really want these space build a minifigure minifigures because I think they look really, really cool. And I definitely want to have all of the newer space colors. I think there is a gold and a dark orange or a dark brown. This was meant to be a dark blue. The torso does come in the mech. So I could pick up the mech. I think it's only like eight, nine pound. It's one of the cheaper mechs and get the torso and legs for that. And then the white legs on this should be fairly easy. I've probably got some in my collection. It's just the torso that I'm gonna to have to wait for. So hopefully next time we go to a Lego store, we can go to a different one and see if they've got the torso in stock. But I think it's probably a fairly popular piece. So the head and antenna pieces for this alien were very well in stock at the Stratford store. So if you are heading out to Stratford, I know these minifigures have been out for almost a month now. So I weren't expecting to get them all but I'm happy I got most of the pieces and was able to complete one of the new space minifigures. And once again, I'll be keeping an eye on Bricklink, but what about the torso and legs? Well, when I'm unable to get any of the specific pieces for the minifigures I'm trying to build, I try and pick up some really unique elements and I really like this glistening torso. And then we've also got these dungarees with a short top. It looks like some sort of farmer's gear. So. I had to pick both of them up and the dual molded legs. Well, last year I got these three minifigures and the minifigure on the right was kind of a spare. I really did like the torso, but I mainly wanted these two bricks. So I got the brick minifigures here and I'm very happy with how they turned out and ended up getting dual molded legs because specifically the dark tan and the dark gray, I don't think they have light gray on the builder minifigure section yet, which Hopefully they will change because my rebel troops do need some boots, but the dark tan and the dark gray are really useful when it comes to Star Wars, specifically some Imperial officers with the dark gray and black. Most of the rebel troopers have these dark gray trousers or some resistance heroes. So I have done this before. These aren't using build a minifigure legs. The left legs are taken from Miles Morales for Yularen on the left. And on the right is my Rampart custom from Bad Batch. I'm going to be honest, I don't know where the legs are from, but I'm pretty sure it's a Lego City minifigure that must have come with dual molded legs at some point. And we've got Race Alone here, which the torso does line up for a Clone Wars Tarkin if you wanted to make a custom. I am trying to still get my hands on a cheap tire bomber. I've seen it for £40. But I'm just waiting for it to drop under and hopefully it will towards the end of the year so I can pick up another race alone, another TIE Bomber, 
have a tie bomb up for my display, another Vader for the collection, and then have a spare race alone torso raised from the Squadrons game, which I haven't quite finished the story from, but I've got far enough to be invested in the character. And then we've got these dark grey legs with the boots, which you can see just comparing Ray to Rampart and Yalaran just really improves the look of the characters. We've also got two rebels here. We've got Captain Antilles from the Tantive boarding diorama, who's in desperate need of some boots. And we've also got Padme, who I can't really believe that they didn't give her dual molded legs, but we definitely need a few more Padme costumes anyway. So I'm gonna switch the legs and we'll see how much better they look. And it really was as easy as that to improve these three minifigures. You can see every Imperial officer needs a pair of boots. It's one of the big changes from the UCS Star Destroyer. I think they might have had some printed arms. I'm not quite sure what they would have done, but it was mainly the boots. And I think that was one of the first times it had been done. So ever since then, I've been wanting to do this with all my Imperials and race alone is no exception. For Padme, I really think this does improve her look as of course she's gonna have boots to go with her outfit. And even Antilles just adds that bit of color because Plain legs can let down a minifigure, and when there's no pockets to add, especially for Antilles and the Imperial Officer, there's no pockets, there's no extra details they can add without it looking a bit less of a Lego minifigure. It really does make the character look good. And we've got to add UCS X-Wing Pilot Luke into this lineup. This is the very first X-Wing Pilot that I got in minifigure form, and I think it was from one of the Planet series, actually. I probably have one or two of these laying around and comparing him to that new Luke Skywalker looks really, really, I mean, this Luke minifigure has been on the market for about a year now, but I really like the dual molded legs and just comparing them to the plain legs, they just make the character look that much more accurate. And I think that goes for the other three as well. I'm very happy with everything I got from the Lego store and I will be trying to complete the build a minifigure space collection as well. So keep your eyes out. Next time I'm making a Bricklink order, I'll probably order the extra torso and see if I can pick up the mech in a sow. And in case you were wondering what I'm doing with the old legs from the minifigure, I've just whacked them on these builder minifigures and there is so much room on the inside. In fact, there's six minifigures in there now. We've got 10, let's whack these two officers in there too. We've got 12 minifigures and it still closes up quite easily. You can definitely get 15 minifigures. I didn't ask about the price change because this has gone up from six pound to seven pound. And I wonder if that still means you can get an extra minifigure for two pound, because if so, you could fill this with at least up to 15 minifigures with their accessories. And it saves having to pile a load of boxes. And that is definitely easier to fit in your bag than five of these. So next time I'm in a Lego store, I will have to ask just how many minifigures you can buy in each of these boxes. And I wonder if they even let you fill one of the bigger pick a brick boxes. It's definitely gonna be more expensive than just getting a pick a brick. You'll still have to pay for each of the minifigures, but it's a lot more efficient than having a ton of these cases. So let me know which one you prefer. And before I wrap up this video, I'd just like to show off my Yoda keyring that's currently on my keys is a looking a bit worse for wear. So I might actually replace him with Luke now, but him with the other special Lego key rings I've got, because this is what he is meant to look like here. And as you can see, he's been through quite a bit. It's more of the reddish torso. We did get two variations of Clone Wars Yoda and the key ring does look a bit different to either of them, but it's based off the left one, which I think we got earlier. And in the right one is the later one. So I guess Yoda's heading into retirement and then I can whack Luke on my keys. And I almost forgot to mention, you know how much I like all the products that help with cleaning and dusting around all the different Lego displays. There's a lot of Lego on display, so there definitely needs to be a few. And I usually use the keyboard gel, but a lot of people use makeup brushes. Now, the reason we were in London is I was heading to a makeup event with my fiance as a plus one. And whilst we were there, Real Techniques had a stand and were carving everyone's names into makeup brushes and they offered one to me. So I wasn't gonna turn down something for free and I do have my own Lego duster with moldy engraved on, which I think is really, really cool. So I'm now gonna be using this as well as the gel to dust around and wanted to show it off because 
how many LEGO fans have their own personalized makeup brush for Dustin? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, do leave a like on the way out and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And may the bricks be with you always.